Bom, bom dia a todos, é, dando início então a, a essa primeira atividade, que não era a primeira programada inicialmente, mas é a primeira atividade é, desse evento é, público, né? já, a gente já desenvolveu algumas visitas e, e, e contatos foram feitos durante a semana, graças à presença do nosso convidado aqui, Carlo Nozza, da Universidade da Suíça Italiana, Academia de Arquitetura. É, e hoje, então, a palestra é, com a participação é, de dois é, convidados externos que estão lá na Suíça e também é, do nosso colega Ricardo Paiva, é, em Fortaleza, na Universidade Federal do Ceará, é, que vai nos ajudar a abrir esse, esse evento aqui. Então, queria... É, não, não, não monopolizar essa fala inicial, mas apenas agradecer é, aqui, em especial, o Cal RJ é, por acolher essa, essa atividade remota é, em razão é, dos acontecimentos aqui é, que ocorreram na quarta-feira, com chuvas fortes de verão. É, então, para garantir essa qualidade da conexão, a gente preferiu, então, migrar para a sede do CAL, aqui no centro da cidade, para quem conhece, é, e realizar esse evento é, em, em formato híbrido, né, com a presença de alguns colegas aqui no auditório, mas também do público é, via canal é, YouTube da FAO. Tá? Então, agradecer também a presença de todos aqui, de todos que estão nos assistindo remotamente, agradecer a nossos palestrantes também remotos por essa participação é, tão especial para nós aqui no dia de hoje. Eu vou passar a palavra é, para o nosso presidente do KRJ é, para também fazer aqui as boas-vindas a todos. Bom dia a todos e a, e a todas. É, para a gente é um enorme prazer receber esse evento da FAO, é, evento importantíssimo, é, não se supera ou se, se avança em cima do movimento moderno sem ter e em pé, né? Então é importante essa, esse esforço que está sendo feito, né? De recuperação do nosso prédio, do nosso, que é um patrimônio da arquitetura brasileira, premiado na Bienal de 57, né? É, nesse mesmo auditório foi criada a minha FAO, que é a Associação de Amigos e ex-aluno da FAO, da FAO FVJ, e que também tem como, claramente, o, o primeiro objetivo é trabalhar para a recuperação da, da FAO. Vejo aqui na plateia Elsa Costeira, representando a, a nossa associação, né? E eu fico muito feliz de poder ajudar nesse, nesse esforço que me parece, como disse, fundamental. E ter humildade, porque é, tem muito conhecimento no mundo inteiro, e nós temos que ter essa sabedoria de saber congregar esse conhecimento quando quando é necessário, como esse caso do nosso belíssimo prédio da FAO FGJ. Faço aqui minha homenagem a um colega com qual convivi muito tempo, né? Paulo Jardim, estudou, estudou muito esse prédio, tem uma tese sobre isso, né? e é, é inacreditável né? pensar assim que todo prédio é módulo de um pequeno de uma pequena cerâmica, né? Então é um exercício de rigor compositivo espetacular, né? É, ao mesmo tempo reinvenções de, é, de elementos antigos, né? O claustro renascentista, o claustro da, do monastério, o claustro das primeiras universidades é reinventado com uma forma livre, né? Então é realmente um para quem conviveu muito tempo e para quem não conhece conhece pela primeira vez será sempre uma experiência ímpar. Né? Então, obrigado por estarem todos aqui, que nos assiste também virtualmente, e vamos em frente. Obrigado. É, bom, eu estou aqui como diretor adjunto de extensão, é, que a gente da FAO está organizando, eu, junto com a Daniela, a equipe toda é, do Centro de Referência Jorge Baixa Moreira, que a gente criou né, em outubro, é, agradecer a presença de todos esse segundo evento internacional que promovemos, né, importantíssimo que na realidade hoje não é a inauguração ter sido ontem, mas como já foi dito está sendo hoje, mas é fundamental também é, agradecer também é, o Pablo já falou um pouco primeiro ao próprio Cal, pelo nosso apoio que tem nos dado e, e, e também a minha FAO, que também nos deu um apoio muito importante para a vinda do Carlos Nodza 
uh, agradecer ao professor Carlos Nosa pela uh, vinda e, e essa semana intensa, né, que já começamos uh, conhecendo o, o Rio de Janeiro, o Praia da FAO, fizemos visita já ao próprio Centro de Referência, visita guiada pelo edifício, uh, visita ao NPD, agradecer ao Andrés e ao, ao Jonas também. Uh, enfim, é um, é um esforço conjunto. Né? Teremos amanhã a, a palestra presencial que vai inaugurar com a, a, a professora Andréa Bordi e a professora Margarete, que não pode estar aqui hoje, mas vai estar amanhã. Né? Uh, e depois, enfim, continuamos as várias discussões sobre o edifício, discussões internas, técnicas, porque isso vai gerar um projeto uh, de recuperação e de e busca, enfim, de apoio e tal. Mas, de certa forma, acho que talvez o mais importante de tudo é essa congregação, junção de conhecimentos e de interesses dos, dos professores, dos alunos, dos pesquisadores em torno da arquitetura moderna, mas do nosso edifício, que é muito mais que só arquitetura moderna, né? quer dizer, é um edifício vivido, uh, venciado há 60 anos, fundamental para todos que lá passaram e tem passado, não a tua associação foi criada, enfim, tudo isso é muito importante. Não vou pro, é, prosseguir, uh, agora dando uh, espaço para o começo... Ah, não, antes disso, vamos chamar... Guilherme, por favor. É, eu esqueci de nos apresentar, né? Pablo Benetti, presidente do, do KRJ, Sérgio Fagerlande, diretor adjunto de extensão, organizador do evento, é, e eu mesmo, Guilherme Lassans, diretor da FAO FRJ. Então, a gente vai agora deixar os lugares para o pro, pro, professor Carlos Noz e professor Andréia, que vão acompanhar aqui é, mais diretamente, junto com, com o professor Sérgio, esse, essa interlocução com os nossos convidados. Muito obrigado. Eu mesmo. Tá. É eu, não é você no meio? É. Agora, bom, agora, uh, bom, já apresentou o professor Carlos, agora vamos começar a conferência, né? A, a, a ideia é que agora apareça o professor Ricardo Paiva, né? Uh, ah, tá aqui, é porque toda essa questão híbrida, né? É, apesar da gente de dois anos de, de experiência. É, online, a gente sempre faz um pouquinho, né? a gente tem muita saudade desse presencial, então é um grande prazer que estamos aqui presencialmente, mas agora então a gente abre o professor Ricardo Paiva, uh, professor da Universidade Federal do Ceará, mas aqui, estando aqui também como conselheiro do Docomomo Brasil, é, uh, vai falar algumas palavras a respeito, enfim, uh, dessa abertura desse evento. Obrigado, Ricardo. Eu que agradeço, Sérgio, bom dia a todos né, que estão acompanhando aí presencialmente, virtualmente, o evento, eu sou o Ricardo Paiva, sou professor junto ao Departamento de Arquitetura, Urbanismo e Design da UFC e também coordenador do Programa de Pós-Graduação em Urbanismo e Design da UFC e estou aqui como conselheiro fiscal do Docomomo representando essa gestão. Né? Então, primeiro, queria agradecer ao professor Guilherme Lassance e ao Sérgio Fagerland pelo convite. Né? Queria cumprimentar também a colega Dilga Marino, o, e os colegas Franz Graf e Carlos Noza, e o presidente do CAU FRJ, Pablo Benetti, e também que eu vi aí presente a Andrea Borg, o professor Andrea Borg. É, bem, eu acho que é um prazer participar dessa iniciativa de intercâmbio né, internacional, acho que de alguma forma o, o Docomomo é uma rede que faz com que a gente... É, se conecte, e isso é, é bastante interessante. Então, nessa perspectiva de conexão, eu queria, é, tinha combinado, né, muito rapidamente falar aqui um pouco sobre essas conexões que o a atual gestão do Docomomo está pretendendo e está realizando. né Vou compartilhar aqui a apresentação muito rapidamente. Por favor, Sérgio, controla meu tempo aí. Vai ser coisa assim bastante, bastante rápida, quase cinemática. Bem, então, é, essa apresentação foi preparada pela gestão, né? é, o Documom Brasil e suas conexões. Então, é, essa, esse comitê é formado é, por pessoas de várias é, universidades do Brasil inteiro, né? a presidente é a professora Auxílio Afonso, muito conhecida como Caqui, 
O secretário executivo é o Ivan Nilson Pereira, mestrando na FAUUSP, o tesoureiro é o Rude Ivan Catani, no Conselho Fiscal está a Alda Ferreira é, e eu, Ricardo Paiva, e alguns colaboradores, né, como a Seila Cardoso, da UFBA, a Selma Chaves, é, e também o Alexandre dos Santos e algumas outras pessoas no apoio aqui, toda a turma, né, essa é, é a equipe, é, e as ações têm se voltado mais ou menos para esses itens, né, a questão da gestão interna, a questão da rede nacional, da internacionalização, da socialização em rede, das publicações e das capacitações. Além também de trabalhar o reforço né, do objetivo final do Docomum, que é trabalhar a questão da documentação e a conservação, essas conexões e um reforço né, para preparar as novas gerações para os desafios da documentação e conservação é, do movimento moderno. E também algumas programações relacionadas ao aniversário de 30 anos do Docomom Brasil. Né? Então, de gestão interna, vou passar muito rapidamente, peço desculpa é, que eu esteja me apressando e dificulte um pouco aí a compreensão dos colegas estrangeiros. É, uma reformulação dos sites foi uma coisa importante, né? a conexão justamente também dos núcleos, a reativação de alguns núcleos que existiam e, enfim, estão um pouco é, desativados e a criação de novos núcleos, como pode ser visto de Goiás, no Amazonas, Santa Catarina e o núcleo Paraíba. Aqui alguns eventos né, que têm sido realizados em rede, esse particularmente foi o que eu organizei, que aconteceu aqui em Fortaleza. Também é, eventos em parceria, no caso aí com o TIC, é, também com o Fórum de Entidades em Defesa do Patrimônio Cultural Brasileiro e também esse, né, com a interlocução com o CAL, que é também quem está é, participando dessa parceria junto à FAUFRJ, nesse Seminário Nacional de Patrimônio em Ouro Preto, é, também com o CAL Pernambuco. É, na questão da internacionalização, né, a representação é, dos brasileiros no comitê, no caso a professora Ruth Verdesign, o Fernando Diniz, a Marta Peixoto, é, as redes sociais, né, que tem sido uma coisa bastante intensa, no caso a revista, que eu estou como também um dos, dos editores, né, então a revista deve estar saindo muito brevemente, e aí no caso é, esse número 7 vai fazer uma homenagem, uma comemoração aos 30 anos do Docomom. É, também um boletim que a gente tem trabalhado, né, herança histórica da, das outras gestões, é, para buscar é, publicizar essas informações relativas ao patrimônio moderno, sobretudo é, o patrimônio em risco, as ameaças é, do patrimônio moderno. Né, algumas outras publicações também, no caso esse, esse livro organizado pelo professor Auxílio Afonso e a professora Selma Chaves. E aqui também uma série de eventos de capacitação, né, que tem contado com a participação muito boa assim, de muitos alunos de graduação, de pós-graduação. E, evidentemente, a realização dos seminários né, regionais e, e o seminário nacional. Né? Esse ano teremos um seminário nacional, né? E a questão da documentação, também alguns vínculos com o Comitê de Documentação do ICOMOS Brasil e a conversa com o CAL, né? É, em relação à conservação, a realização desse fórum de conservação do patrimônio moderno e também é, esse sobre paisagens e modernidade foi também uma iniciativa do dessa gestão, né? E também trabalhando muito a questão da afiliação dos estudantes, né? E como parte da comemoração do aniversário dos 30 anos do Docomomo, esse evento foi realizado na UFBA, né? Que é a Doco 30, mas ela é 90, Fábrica e Patrimônio, que teve a participação aí importante da professora Seila Cardoso e da é, Kaki, né? E aqui o número especial da revista, conforme eu já falei, bem é isso... Muito obrigado, e eu desejo né, que, é, na verdade, é, o, o evento seja um sucesso, né, apesar das intercorrências naturais, 
e que é, essa rede do Docomomo é, possa nos conectar cada vez mais para que a gente possa trocar as experiências e aprender com elas. Muito obrigado. e de Olho Marino, uh, que estão falando lá da Suíça. Uh, I don't know because uh, there was no sound, so we, we will switch in English if uh, it's okay for you. And uh, I think uh, Uh, I would like, <clears throat> in preamble, to, to thank uh, uh, Professor Guillermo Lassange, uh, the Dean of the faculty, uh, but also all the colleagues that uh, uh, have been uh, expressing uh, uh, and, and uh, doing our invitation. So thank you, thank you so much. Uh, we, as we uh, manage with uh, Carlo uh, Nozza, we have prepared a conference. It's okay for you? We, we have no feedback uh, with the sound. Do you, do you hear us? Yes, we are hearing and we are seeing. Uh, okay. Um, so my my uh, my question was: uh, uh, we we uh, we talk with uh, Carlo, and uh, I think our task was to make a conference about uh, La Cité du Lignon. Is that okay for you? Uh, do we start, or uh, can you give us uh, some uh, indications, informations about that? Yeah, it's absolutely okay. They they know that you will present the, all the process about uh, Cité de Lignon. Okay. Hello. Hello, Carlo. How are you? And you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, the conference, uh, uh, it's about uh, I don't know, half an hour or three quarters of an hour. Yes. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, we are going to articulate uh, our conference uh, uh, on housing complexes of the Canton de, de Geneva, Geneva, Switzerland, and put them in perspective in the European situation. Uh, because it seems to us that uh, the researches which uh, we carry out lead to another consideration of the build collective of the post-war period, but above all, an intervention that is at once more respectful, quieter, more efficient, and more qualitative than the current practice. We believe these research, uh, this researchers belong to a real project of contemporary architecture. It's, it's not just history, is making architecture and contemporary architecture. From 2008 to uh, 2012, uh, our laboratory, the Laboratory of Techniques and Preservation of Modern Architecture, uh, that is uh, uh, at the Ecole Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne, uh, this school hosts Uh, Doctorum of Switzerland, and, and we, uh, we are um, talking about this position of uh, uh, as chairs of Doctorum uh, Switzerland. And uh, uh, our laboratory was asked uh, to uh, develop uh, an applied research for an architectural and energy study of uh, the uh, building you are seeing in the image who is the Cité du Lignon uh, near Geneva. The heritage, heritage value of the Cité du Lignon, architectural, technical, social values, was recognized both 
qualitatively and quantitatively. The satellite city is designed by the office of Ador and Julia, represented an exceptional case study on numerous levels and afforded an opportunity to look more widely at large scale contemporary heritage places and their future. An intervention at a site where heritage aspects, economic limitations, and energy efficiency factors intersect demanded a total synergy with purpose designed tools for preventive conservation, who forward looking character can encourage the formation of a coherent regularity framework. It demands a synthetic approach that enables the reconciliation of issues which today are not generally wired and reconciliable. The results, founded on an exhaustive knowledge of the build object, its material identity and intrinsic characteristics, might give us insights from which we can develop new approaches that are more attentive to contemporary heritage everywhere, not only in Switzerland, but everywhere. The results are convincing, and today the 125,000 square meters of facade are under conservation. From the beginning of this pioneering research, the laboratory was very attentive to European collective housing in the post-war period, and in particular, in the architectural impact of thermal retrofitting. That is probably not the case in Brazil, but uh, uh, in Europe and North Europe is a crucial uh, challenge uh, to, um, to, to deal with. Statistics gathered by the Swiss Federal Bureau of Energy are revealing. Existing buildings account so, for some 40 percent of Switzerland's total energy consumption. On this evidence, improvements, improvements in energy performance in the building sector have been seen as a serial priority. This has been uh, much talk about how we can potentially reduce consumption and CO2 emissions in buildings. In contrast, research has not yet come up with effective solutions to address the problem in relation to more energy hungry sectors like transport. This explains the decidedly firm policies that exist in building refurbishment with ever more draconian rules, codes, and quality standards delivered by private organizations with the baking of major partners in the building industry. <clears throat> Under Switzerland's 2000 Watt Society strategy, so strategy at the, at the national level, annual energy consumption targets for buildings after refurbishments have shifted rapidly, not to say dramatically. Permissive heating requirements failing therefore between uh, 1988 and 2009. There have been significant impacts on existing buildings. Architecture of the second half of the 20th century, especially that dating from the two decades that preceded the oil crisis of the, of the 70s, has been a prime target. The specifics of construction of buildings of that area widely regarded as leaky and poorly insulated, have made them especially vulnerable. Moreover, getting heritage recognition for these buildings has been not an easy task. As a result, radical alterations that show little regard for the architectural value and scant appreciation of the real potential afforded by adapting 
and altering them are become all too common. Replacing envelopes or adding external, external linings or wrapping uh, them in insulation have been the order of the day. Contemporary heritage, far from being treated as a resource, has been fallen victim in an unmitigated preference for introducing drastic measures for thermal improvement, regardless of a state's value as historical document and without adequate efforts to evaluate a building actual performance. For structures protected under heritage law, and for theirs only, the recommendations for an improving energy conception in historic monuments, drawn out jointly by the Federal Commission on Monuments and the Federal Bureau of Energy in 2009, recognize that heritage and energy are both legitimate issues. They share essentially the same concerns and seek the same outcomes. Supporting sustainable development by preserving non reversible natural and cultural resources. This important statement suggests that we need to develop options and means that allows us to balance on a case-by-case case case basis the often diverging public interests that apply in these two areas and to find constructive ways of resolving them. This calls for a synthetic analysis that transcends what are widely seen as irreconcilable viewpoints. The research conducted uh, in the laboratory at the EPFL uh, on the Cité du, uh, du Lyon who is a uh, 60s era housing complex of recognizing state of recognized heritage value has set out to do precisely this. During four years from uh, 2008 and uh, 2012, the aim of the research was to define an ad hoc strategy for intervention, tailored to specific building needs in order to see where improvements are needed and identify potential actions. The project on thermal improvements to certain to curtain welling at the Lignon estate that came out of the research was based on a scrupulous appraisal of this interest, facilitating the preservation of modern architecture by conserving existing material identity but also by saving energy. We show that by putting different measures in place, the conservation of existing envelopes can be assured in compliance with energy standards. By a method of evaluation that genuinely attempts to assess the issue using multiple criteria, Based on an exhaustive knowledge of the build object, it, its materiality and its intrinsic characteristics, the study has yielded encouraging results that we hope will stimulate it further efforts. We hope that by focusing on a site as exceptional as the Lignon, this kind of research may be of wider benefit to contemporary heritage and may go some way to addressing the negligence of the recent, of the recent years. Built between uh, 63 and 71, the Cité du Lignon scheme was part of the canton strategy to tackle the population boom in the 60s. It was an ambitious program a housing precinct or satellite city, to use the vocabulary favorite at the time, of 10,000 people, 2,007 uh, apartments uh, that were dispersed in a blend of residential forms 
with from the uh, subsidized, subsidized rent units to condominium ownership, including extensive community facilities. The Geneva architecture firm led by Georges Ador was commissioned to design it. The Lignon was an exceptional scheme of several accounts. Firstly, in terms of the layout. At first of Switzerland's satellite housing estates, the Mehan satellite city, the same architects test, tested an alternative to the orthogonal grid-based urban plan with a discontinuous just acquisition of the towers and range that followed the new residential districts. At the Lignon, the principle is radically different. A freestanding block, block of 11 to uh, 14, 40 story forms a jagged continuous line of uh, one kilometer of length, defined by the perimeter and gradient of the plot. A pair of towers of 36 and uh, 30 uh, respectively uh, high, at the far end of the plot, conclude the arrangement and together with community facilities occupying the center part of the site, completed the development of a site that will be boast a building density, density of one meter of floor space to one meter of land. As Eugène Baudouin has suggested in uh, uh, 1955, the architects finally rejected the idea of splitting up unbuilt spaces with block facing one another, limiting outlook and casting shadows over each other. With a layout derived from a single continuous volume, Georges Ador in the 60s allied himself with a strain of thoughts that openly rejected the strict application of the modernist doctrine. The project for the new town of uh, Toulouse Mihai by Candelis, Josic, and Woods was certainly a point of reference as shown by the earliest sketches for the Lignon from 62, where the biological model introduced by Alison and Peter Smithson is plainly visible. As well as the site layout, which, as we have seen, broke with the convention and underlined the scheme architectural modernity, this pioneering project also possesses remarkable technical and constructive fit figures. The notion of industrialized building and rationalized structural systems capital payments during the post war decades of the Trente Glorieuse, after the Second War, were in fact central to the realization. Faced with building on such a huge scale, the systems, components, and details, everything from the structure of reinforced concrete leaves, it was the first use in Switzerland of uh, this kind of, of process known as uh, the tunnel framework to prefabricated curtain wall design were devised so to simplify the construction process. In the load bearing frame cannot uh, strictly be described and prefabricated. The uh, 125,000 square meters of facade curtain walling at the Cité de Lignon are perfectly in line with the principles of prefabrication, just as the architect claimed. They consist of a large format panels, one full story high, comprising a pine wood interior frame and aluminum exterior panel. The infill comprises altern alternating fixed opaque elements, tempered glass with interior insulation, and glazed opening box tip panels, the wooden, the wooden inner and the metal outer frames being separated. On such a large urban canvas, 
a, a search for biometrics and the plastic developments of the continuous facade play a primary role. The smooth exterior surface surfaces accented by aluminum jewelry is enhanced by the subtle brilliance of glazing and modulated by alternating transparent and opaque infill elements. Presented as Switzerland's most important post war housing scheme, the Lignon has been widely seen by critics as remarkable on several, on several levels town planning, architectural, technical, and social. An exceptional scheme, both in scale and originality, the Cité de Lignon has been widely discussed in Switzerland and abroad, mostly in glowing terms. The object of a number of, of sociological studies since the day it opened, the Lignon, described as a, quote, a well-loved giant by the local press, is indeed much appreciated by its residents who value its living environment. The cantonal heritage authorities also acknowledge the merit of Ador and Julia's creation, and the Lignon is safeguarded by a conservation plan approved in May 2009, the aim of which is to put in place, quote, specific measures aimed to preserving the architectural unity of the buildings, the planning design, and the architectural quality of exterior spaces. End of quote. As for the linear heritage value has been legally, legally recognized, a total conservation strategy is needed. With no clear legal framework of the nature of the interventions, and faced with an unaut unauthorized replacement of features such as PVC windows in place of wood metal frames, the Canton of Geneva and the consortium representing the building owners commissioned uh, the uh, laboratory in May 2008 to prepare an architectural and energy study of the envelopes. The first step was a multimodal diagnostic of envelope constituents, hazardous materials, adapt insulation materials, and others and integrating an analysis of the thermal behavior of a specimen block. Based on the multimodal diagnostic, two interventions, four intervention options have been identified for standard linear facades. They have been ranked according to their impact on the material character of the building, the conservation impact and studied in terms of architecture and technical implications in the context of the conservation plan stipulations, the visual and physical chemical impact on the original facade fabric. They range from simple maintenance, <coughs> option A, to replacement of the curtain wall in with a replica, option D, with intermediate solutions that include repair, option B, and refurbishment, option C. To compare multiple criteria within those different options, a Gwiden table that you have in, at, at the screen was produced using three types of data. On the horizontal axis are descriptions of works to be carried out and life cycle estimates. On the vertical axis, we show a summary assessment of cost and energy needs, including an estimate of eating cost saving. The three variables, heritage, economy, and energy, are therefore easily visible at a glance. Looking at the table, which we see as a decision-making tool to assist building owners, one immediately rejects the proposition D, the facade replacement, for which the high overall cost 
cannot be justified in terms of any reproduction of eating needs. That are above uh, the limits pres prescri prescribed under the new Swiss regulations. Options A, B, and C are however retained, as well as ensuring acceptable conservation of the original facades, they offer a palette of possible interventions, are fully compatible with one with another, that's an important point, from which owners can choose according to their financial means that are not the same. <clears throat> During development of these options, an initial feasibility test showed clearly that standard solution of the self-modern replacement windows, for instance, should be rejected, not being suitable in the context. Instead, a bespoke solution applied over the large surface of the facade and designed on an ad hoc basis has to be preferred in order to meet the stipulations of the conservation plan. To this end, prototypes of the A, B, and C options were planned for the complete exterior envelope on a specimen apartment. Designs for a facade detailing and assembly and final selection of materials in terms of installation and thermal properties tested not only by simulation but under real construction conditions were developed with a facade engineer and a specialist contractor. From this, a set of standard methods to be used for each of the solutions, together with specifications giving detailed descriptions of the intervention and basic work working guidelines could be drawn up. The Canton Heritage and Energy Authorities synced up in advance to these models and developed a simplified consent procedure. This allowed timely planning and works essential at this scale according to the means of building owners and guaranteed an overall consistency in the works carried out, preserving the architectural unity of the Lignon and is 125,000 square meters of facade envelopes. You see some pictures about <clears throat> the prototypes on site between 2010 and 2011. Voracious, energy black hole, ecological monster. The Lignon precinct has been called all manner of things in the recent years and widely denounced as a disaster in terms of sustainable development. Radical renovation of the site to bring it into compliance with current standards has been dismissed as fanciful. After three years of research, our study was producing encouraging results. A 70% improvement in overall energy consumption in, rel in relation to annual figures is now possible. That allow us to get close to, if not to actually within legal limits, as it's possible with the more radical options now available, using ultra high performance materials like uh, uh, vacuum insulation, aerogel, heat meters, glazing, etc. We feel it is vital to emphasize that this can be done without circumventing current laws. Even through the Lignon does enjoy a measure of protection in the form of conservation plan. Offsetting energy consumption as demanded by local, the local authorities can be become part of an energy saving strategy that, even through it may not always be enough to, to achieve statutory targets, nonetheless can yield excellent results broadly within, within legal limits. 
The Cité du Lignon is exceptional in scale, originality, and architectural quality. Its value as a monument is legally recognized through the adoption of a conservation plan for the site. It has merited nothing less than an exhaustive investigation, a pilot, a pilot study spread over a fairly long period, so that the most appropriate solutions for energy use mitigation can be established, fully respecting original material identity and taking proper account of the financial resources available to the various partners. Based on this, the first phases of a remedial work program has been <clears throat> underway at the Cité de Lignon. We can uh, estimate that uh, today, 80% uh, uh, of the buildings of this one kilometer too long building uh, have been uh, restored. For that uh, uh, work, we receive also some um, uh, awards from different points of, of uh, um, different entities. For instance, Europa Nostra, it, it's, uh, um, it's uh, um, amazing for Switzerland to receive a, a, an European prize. Uh, or more specific uh, um, uh, prices about uh, Swiss architects, or recently uh, by a jury, an international jury from Docomo International, a prize uh, uh, with all the works all around the world. Uh, the, the, this, uh, this research has been documented, so that, that's clear, and, and you can find it, for instance, in the Docomomo journals, that if I don't, uh, uh, if, if I, if, I um, if it's, it's correct, you can find it online uh, in the site of Docomomo International. So the part of documentation and dissemination of the research has been do done accurately uh, to, um, uh, to make possible the, the reuse as a methodology uh, of, uh, of this research, applied research. So likewise, our study affords an opportunity to look more widely at large scale contemporary heritage and its future. The convergence of heritage, economic constraints and energy issues calls for a global strategy for specially designed forward-looking preventive conservation tools to enable consistent legal frameworks to be developed. In terms of method, but also in terms of results, our powers, pilot study could be a valuable precedent applicable to a broader corpus of similar object, not least to more routine examples of post-war building stock. This topic has come to be of wider interest, and we can say that this recent interest, in, interest indicates a key cultural shift. In the last 15 years, with the benefit of historical insight, we have begun to look again at housing scheme of the post-war period. There are so many, and there are often of considerable heritage interests. Indeed, they are increasingly being recognized as heritage in a way that would have hardly been thinkable not so long ago. The protection afforded to Ernogold Fingal Barfront Towers in London or the Cité de l'Etoile in Bobigny by the architects trio Candelis, Josing and Woods are cases in point. We will well be fooling ourselves, of course, if we took this represented as consensus, the Robin Hood Gardens by Alison and Peter Smithson is under destruction, and Britain's Prime Minister is announcing the demolition of brutal high-rise towers, I quote, that are a gift to criminals and drug dealers. Nonetheless, all over Europe, and well beyond the confines of academia and the heritage lobby, we are witnessing a renewed interest in the large format housing complexes of the late 20th century, an emblematic corpus that has helped, in the real sense of the term, shape the contemporary landscape. Only now, 
are the schemes beginning to be appreciated by users and pu public opinion alike. Conspicuous as they, they are, these buildings are seen as plain and ordinary. So despite a plethora of consultation, public initiatives and research intended to shew new light on the theme of the Grand Ensemble, not least in its social implication, interventions can vary immensely. Ideas about how to protect contemporary architecture and the scientific tools for cataloging in it, cataloging it uh, are becoming clearer. Traditional art historical criteria are being re refined by new kinds of assessment, technological innovation, production techniques, and aesthetic of manufacture in series. Yet current architectural practice which an existing building is still feeling its way forward. A tremendous variety of strategies have been adopted and our researches on collective housing present day relevance propose to revisit. On the European scale, this very multiplicity of approaches. But the situation is on notice. Things are not as reassuring as they could be. Only rarely are the methods defined with the aid of suitably true, more generic supporting studies. It is a mixed picture on the ground where intervention pay only the scantest attention, most often by accident, to the material integrity and the cultural values of post-war architecture, whilst landscape character is overlooked altogether. In this context, large post-war housing schemes, originally conceived as a demonstration of architectural, technological, and social aspiration, are now a major target for action when it comes to issues like energy consumption. Should the Grand Ensemble be demolished, the question was a major preoccupation for architects in the 90s. Incidental as it may seem today, the question is not completely hold hat. The initial progressive shift toward the practice of maintenance is to be welcomed, but we still need to be conscious, looking forward that the qualities of value or value of construction built between 1945 and 1975 are only rarely recognized are preserved. A real transfiguration of the contemporary city is, is silently under wall all around us. In this reinterpretation of the von Überbauung read by Payer and Lehmann at Wittgen in Switzerland, the architect Adrian Strikes hides a minutely conceived thermal upgrade in the fluid profile of the new envelopes. For the Gunnersville Folketsville by Mar Marcel Meili and Marcus Peter, metamorphosis provides an occasion to reflect on the methods of industrialized production by means of superimposed prefabricated timber structure and panels over the original planted bow. Lacato and Vassal, along with Drouin, and Utin at Cité Grand Parc in Bordeaux are building on the Tour du Bois Le Prêtre experience with an intervention that is primarily designed for economy and includes winter gardens and prefabricated concrete balconies onto the facade, the original expression of which is to be utterly reconfigured. Set against landmark operations such as deaths on ordinary housing to which each designer has in his own own way contributed a plus for the existing fabric. It's a pity that more common practice generally missed the mark. Major physical intervention, clumsy on the aesthetical level, never mind the heritage impact, are the norm. They are made independently of the intrinsic quality of a building. Voter energy legislation in compounding the issues. New, over-insulated and ventilated facades are popping out popping up all over, flattening model detail in the raising lines of force that were once described with utmost carefulness. We have metal siding and fibered cement wrapped our around volumes and cloaking balconies, losing nuance in the relief, simplifying the, and impoverishing the volumetrics. Window joinery, it's growing thicker, replaced by either frame capable of supporting triple glazing. And as for color, the cliche of cliche, 
Look no further than the makeover treatment of the remarkable BBPR Grattosoglio Quartier in Milan or the super tower Super Montparnasse in Paris by Bernard Zerfurt. Intelligent juxtaposition of material and textures meticulously rendered by designer of the 60s ditched for a chair board of garish tone, brightened by a touch of color, usually an astonishing shade of red, straight from the standard plate industry color chart. Evan attempts to preserve original characteristics by adding a new external layer, evoking the existing color and material look like caricatures. This clumsy, irreversible thermal renovation follow a trend for upgrading or more prosaically achieved code compliance that too often writes Roxo over the need for, or for a prior determination of the value of the built object and ignores its, its intrinsic quality, qualities. Undertaken the, at the huge cost, they should give us pause for reflection. The imperatives of energy conservation, rightly recognized and inescapable, are becoming the pretext for giving buildings a new identity. In a more subtle way, it seems that even object and knowledge as an exceptional, exceptional historical importance might not be free from harm in spite of the cheap constraints of the heritage planning concept. While some intervention unfortunately established constraint for energy retrofitting as a priority of the, for, from the outset, or the cases like the Siedlung Allen in Bern, an iconic housing estate by Atelier 5, known and admired well behind the Swiss border, face an uncertain future. In much the same vein is the recent energy upgrade of the Mirmont Le Cré complex in Geneva by architect Marc Joseph Soget. Listed as a monument, it illustrates the limitation of the exercise where there is no clear strategy setting out what is to be achieved. On one level, a fruitful cooperation involving the cantonal heritage and energy efficiency authorities has spared Sojib's building from the worst effects of code complaints, allowing performance below the legal consumption limit thanks to a series of well-conceived offsets. But on another level, the need uh, to demonstrate exemplary energy efficiency outcomes as by default sanctioned an overall upgrade strategy that uses a repertoire of high-tech thermal performance products aimed to meet insulation values similar to those of new construction, even though they have somewhat uncomfortable consequences in terms of the visual and architectural qualities of the original ensemble. Emblematic of these modern works, where notion of lightness and transparency play a crucial role, marrying technical and architectural innovation, the case of the energy upgrade at Mirmont Le Cré encapsulates the difficulties of reconciling the cultural challenge of heritage conservation with environment paradigms. As we have said on another scale, built assets of repeatedly faced with asti and all too radical transformation with no overarching strategy capable of placing limits on what is effectively a transfiguration of contemporary city. Aside from cultural consideration or even just to architectural one, architectural one, with which a session of the horizon we should be looking at these practices with a new sense of urgence. This salutary stance has grown out of a number of highly significant experiences. A case in point is the guidelines developed for the impressive Barbican complex in London, which identifies the original elements as the sole traces of authentic fabric, the only evidence capable of expressing the complex architectural qualities, including the often neglected issues of exterior spaces. In Switzerland, we can point to the important work by architects Miller and Maranta in advance of the energy upgrade works to Hermann Bors Siedlung in Ble in Basel. Uh, from, them, uh, from them, we are learn uh, that uh, detailed uh, knowledge of the fabric is a vital necessity for targeting thermal improvements to the built object at close quarters to construct served its intrinsic characteristics, but without rejecting substantial energy savings. 
By the same token, the intelligent pilot project for the upgrade of the Charnegut in Bern, devised by architect Rolf Muletaler, which is now in progress, is a compelling demonstration of the indispensability of adaptation to current circumstances in terms of energy, but also the typological need of the sector. It manages to respect the striking urban forms within its representative post-war housing scheme, an ensemble well worth preserving. Equally, the highly conclusive experience of the TSAM lab and its applied academic research at the Cité du Lignon were recently extended to other late 20th century Grand Ensemble in the Geneva area for a research project supported by the Stiftung zur Förderung der Denkmalpflege. An appraisal of building according to a wide range of constructional type has shown how the balance between preserving the built object and making sizable thermal improvement generally comes in at around 19% of the legal requirements, depending on the techniques used. The 10% that still needs to be achieved to attain current standard, standards implies heavy and highly destructive intervention. We are technically challenging and therefore entail an exponential increase in build costs for an equivalent life cycle. For existing housing assets, the price in conservation terms and more prosaically in terms of economic investment appears out of the proportion. In place of this intensive therapy, which exacts such a heavy price, we shall be looking at responsible steps to highlight the notion of building heritage as reserves, accepting building performance rating that while not perhaps the best, at this favor sizable or substantial reduction in consumption to be coupled perhaps with gains from renewable, renewable energy. As for highly significant items, an explicit stance is required. Can one reasonably aim for energy excellence by demanding that an existing building with a knowledge heritage value meet the performance need of a new building, rigid established by rules that have evolved into extremely strict limit values? The response is nuanced. In balancing preservation of the built fabric with the environment, perhaps, we need to, uh, to be broadening the issues and reversing the trend. In other words, the building itself should define the limit of intervention, depending on intrinsic material characteristics mapped during preliminary studies. This gets around the issue of a strict application of standards which so often have repercussions and potentially irreversible one on the integrity of objects and more broadly, the appearance of our cities. It's not a matter of neglecting the paradigm that requires us to respect the very legitimate need to reduce energy consumption. Rather, it is a matter of calibrating performance improvement more closely to the built object, prioritizing smaller targeted intervention, ad hoc responses developed from closer contact with the built fabric. This pragmatic and sympathetic approach should be adopted more widely as part of the project of conservation of recent heritage. This is a demanding brief illustrating above all the intelligent and culturally aware position the designer must be ready to occupy. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Uh... Well, I think now we can go to the. I don't know if I speak English in Portuguese. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's amazing that in Geneva you have a so old city uh, with this modern uh, buildings. How can you hold this heritage, this sauvegarde? 
É, é interessante, em Berna, é, é uma cidade tão, tão... e Geneva também, cidades tão antigas em arquitetura, caracteristicamente antigas, a imagem que a gente faz, como que se dá essa, essa profusão de elementos de edifícios modernos. É, eu estou falando de Geneve e Berna porque tem muita coisa que eles mostraram. É interessante essa mistura. Eu queria saber como é, sei lá, a sensação dessa salvaguarda, dessa conservação. Okay. Can, uh, would you uh, can can we give a response for uh, for this question? Because I I think no. I, I think I, I can try to translate the the question it was um, uh, the the professor was asking to you which is your ah uh, okay uh, the 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 professor was asking you uh, which is the um, well, she, she, she is quite interested in the relation, in the typical relation, the, for example, in the Swiss uh, cities, of the um, uh, old buildings and the, and the much more modern buildings that are living together inside of the city. And so I, I, I imagine she's, uh, she's asking to you, which is the, um, uh, the way of living in such kind of cities, and which is the perception of the, of the city in, which is your, your your feelings in living in such kind of city where uh, ancient uh, heritage and much more modern heritage are existing together and are uh, reacting one to the other? Mm -hmm. Is it is it the question? Okay. Okay. Thank you for the for the question. Is a, a very interesting one and not so easy to respond. Um, uh, the the we we can tell one thing is that the, the construction the architecture of the 20th century in Geneva Bern has um, a high level of quality in, in general. They are not not only uh, just um, monuments or, or astonishing buildings. But the, the level, the general level, is is quite quite high, and uh, uh, that's uh, uh, it's, it's good constructed, and and so uh, the the maintenance of this big part of the cities because uh, they are much more important than uh, the historic ones, mm -hmm. um, is uh, is is not so difficult to uh, planificate and 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 to do. So um, that, that's one thing. The other is that um, if, you, uh, if you know a little some, some Swiss cities, for instance, Carouge, who is uh, uh, near Geneva, uh, you have uh, really facing one with another, uh, a city uh, who has a, a, a very historical substance, very interesting, who has been built by the 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 Royaume de Sardaigne, and uh, a new one who has been done in the in the sixties, and and they they really live together, and and they have absolutely the same amount of of people living in there from one part and from the other part, and uh, I think the the good balance. Is, is not to forget one, uh, one type of building or another. You should have the same, um, uh, uh, the, the same investigation, the same research. Uh, it's surely not the, the same uh, uh, materials or methods because the architecture of the 20th century has, 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 has really, uh, is really so different from, from the, the uh, uh, historical one, but uh, uh, at the same level, and and that what's not so uh, um, there have been fights these uh, twenty or I don't know, thirty last years, also um, uh, done with Docomomo, in, with, with originals uh, fights that have been uh, to preserve some such building as 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 we we all know in in Europe. 
uh, to uh, to have a level of um, uh, uh, heritage and a level of, of intervention that is, I don't know, perhaps not the same, but uh, uh, more or less the same that in historical cities. And, and not, not to make difference. It, it, it has no sense to make difference between, for, for, uh, at, at our point of view, huh, from an historical uh, uh, building uh, uh, or, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, um, city and, and a new one. We, can, we must absolutely consider the, the, the two uh, so, uh, and analyze it with the same serious rigor, uh, establishing the qualities and pointing out uh, from the qualities uh, the projects to ma make maintenance uh, and make thermal improvements in Switzerland is, is, very, is very heavy as an intervention. I don't know if I have a uh, give you a response, a satisfactory response. Não, eu posso falar em inglês também, mas acho que posso falar em português e depois em inglês, pode ser? É, é, eu agradeço muito a resposta dele, porque o que a Isa colocou é, o, é a grande dificuldade que a gente tem hoje em dia é de que o moderno também é histórico, afinal, ninguém saiu da história ainda. Né? Então, assim, é a dificuldade de ver que há algo que tem que ser preservado, né? não é só o que foi dos séculos e séculos e séculos anteriores. E eu achei muito interessante o último livro, o último slide da professora Marino, que mostra exatamente é, ensinando preservação e salvaguarda. Você quer traduzir melhor, né? Ok. <risos> Um, the professor was saying that she she was really interested in your presentation, particularly to the the question of uh, the, the the quality of, of modern architecture, and the question that um, it is a sort of uh, um. Uh, qual é que é exatamente o tema da importância do da persistência do do, do o significado do moderno no, 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 e, e a importância the, the importance that uh, modern architecture is gaining inside of the city because probably uh, she, she's saying that the, the feeling here the common feeling in the in the city is that that modern is something that is not such such satisfying satisfying as uh, the the ancient city so the, this is something that they are they are trying to gain in the in the present period and so is 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 very it's quite fascinating that they are they are gaining the modern even if they are so how to say famous as as, as a modern reality so what is really challenging maybe is exactly the the present point and maybe this is the reason why we are here today the, we are here today exactly to point out that modern presence in rio de janeiro for example is an incredible opportunity to to gain quality in the city exactly in in uh, giving back the the importance the significance the cultural meaning to this this part of the city to the rest of the city very important of this uh, meeting yeah and and that's uh, that's important of this meeting and the other question that the, the professor point out is the relation between history and present moment and uh, it's quite it's quite typical even for me that that i'm italian as a re region that sometimes history is a sort of weight that you are on you you have on your shoulder and it's very difficult to manage the weight of the history and probably the the pointing out the importance in leading with the modern heritage is uh, is giving you the opportunity to open your mind uh, open your way of doing in practice uh, in how to to gain back the the the, the modern movement uh, value and what, what is super important to me if i can if i if i can make a, a, a observation to the presentation by by uh, franz graf and julia marino is even the question about the method or and tools that, uh, that they organized around this kind of processes and it's very important you to understand that it's it's a slow work is a very we, we, we are, you need to go in deep 
in very specific uh, questions in order to know understand the building itself knowing the building means knowing the material itself how it was built which was the history which is the place which is which are the relation the environmental relation and so it is the so if for example for the swiss reality for example energy is a dramatic problem and is the main starting problem most of the time and then obviously the economics that is coming from and here there is a completely totally different situation because the climate is completely different but the challenge are always uh, really strong and the point is uh, making some uh, order in this this kind of, of questions and in a sort of uh, guidelines that allows you to to give a, a, a list of topics a list of problems a hierarchy of questions always managing with the reality that is uh, economics uh, um, the, the the possibility that that um, um, heritage is recognized from common people from the society as a very a fundamental cultural element in the present and future uh, situation I'd like to say something about that also because uh, he was talking about thinking about our subject really that's uh, our building the uh, Jorge Machado Moreira that's your, our faculty and so it's very linked to what you're talking about. But uh, I would think about other question about uh, habitation. They are talking about habitation all the time. In, in Rio, and of course, modern architecture is very close to this. In Rio also, we had many uh, buildings, very important uh, habitation, many places in Rio. They are very, they have very, very big problem of uh, conservation. And so uh, it's not a question, but I was just thinking about that and the link between your uh, speak, uh, speech and our problems here also, not only our building, but so many buildings here in Rio that are very important to modern architecture also. But, but the main question is that existing building is a resource, is not a problem. Existing building is a resource, as the professor said. So starting from that point, the question is how to manage with it and how to discover it and how to get it useful. We have in our mind when we think about Switzerland, uh, old cities, very good preserved. And it's amazing to, to, to see the modern movement uh, in Switzerland so present and I would uh, I would like to 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 point that our modernism uh, claims from a French Swiss Switzerland uh, mind from Le Corbusier. It's, it's amazing when we think about uh, because the 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 image that we we have from Switzerland. Is about old, very old cities. Uh, it's good. <laughs> uh, before, uh, before he, she was something for our uh, professors. Uh, I'm I'm reading about YouTube. There are many people uh, watching the the presentation, and especially Professor Margaret Pereira was. Uh, uh, Thank you very much for Professor Graf and Marin for work. Uh, the technological research and for uh, technological and formal uh, research in the difficult uh, balance between uh, energetic economy and financing sustainability and cultural uh, heritage and natural heritage. Uh, and thank you also the, the, the direction of the FAO for the event, etc. Well, no, I would I would like to to ask if there's a, so I think that's a very interesting at that uh, Professor Graf and Professor Marino uh, show us that there is a, like a François Schwed said, c'était les compétences de défier à ce moment là et à ce moment ici aussi. <laughs> je dois parler en français parce que je ne sais pas. C'est très bien. bien. <laughs> Moi, ça me va bien. C'est très bien. <laughs> Excusez-moi, parce que nous, nous étions à Paris euh, et c'est plus facile de parler en français qu'en anglais. Parce que, euh, 
Gracias, Marina. Eh, eh, pas, el bar francés, bien sûr. Oui, oui. Pas grave. <rire> She, uh, she would like you to, to answer her questions. C'est une question pour François, pour Professeur Graf et Professeur Marine. Vous, vous pouvez la préciser, s'il vous plaît, parce que j'ai pas très bien compris. Il y a une coupure. Hein. Il y a une coupure de son. Ah bon? Si. Il y a eu une coupure de, une coupure de son. Si, si vous voulez, si vous nous répétez la, la question, ce sera plus simple. Oui, je peux répéter. Je, je, si vous voulez, je peux répéter en français. Parfait, <rire> parfait, parfait. parfait. <rire> euh, je, vous, je vous demande s'il si y, euh, y a une question, c'est une compétence édifiée à ce moment-là euh, du mouvement moderne. Et vous avez nous montré c'est qu'il y a aussi une compétence édifiée contemporaine liée à cette, cette, cette c'est deux, deux compétences de défier qui se, se mélangent. Euh, C'est ça que j'ai trouvé très intéressant. Oui. Là, on n'entend plus rien. Pardon, c'est un problème avec les sons ici. Oui, ça. Oui. Je ne sais pas si vous avez compris, mais c'est oui, ça. Je... Si, J'ai compris votre question. En fait, il y a, y a une, comp une compétence pour construire euh, l'architecture moderne au XXe siècle, surtout dans l'après-guerre. Et, et c'est vrai qu'en Suisse, il euh, y a eu de très bons constructeurs. Euh, les, cho les choses sont en général en général, bien faite. Euh, je ne sais pas si vous avez euh, vu le, 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 le curtain wall de ce, du bâtiment du Lignon. C'est absolument incroyable. C'est très rare d'avoir un bâtiment de logement euh, où il y a 125 000 mètres carrés de curtain wall. Pour la Suisse, c'est monstrueux. Pe Peut-être qu'à Rio, c'est tout petit, mais, mais pour Genève, c'est vraiment très, très grand. Et, et en fait, c'est un... C'est une façade, c'est un, un, une façade rideau que l'architecte met au point petit à petit, à chaque projet, et, et il utilise toujours la même façade. Et, et que ce soit pour un hôtel luxueux, que ce soit pour du logement populaire, que ce soit euh, pour de l'administration, etc., il, 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 il améliore toujours euh, son, son produit et effectivement, il a une maîtrise technique qui est remarquable, parce que quand on a fait le diagnostic de, de ce curtain wall, on, on a vu qu'il était sain. Il, il est sain, il, il, il a 6, 6 cm d'épaisseur, d'accord Il est fait en bois, en aluminium, en verre, et, et il fonctionne aujourd'hui encore parfaitement. Et on peut l'améliorer au niveau thermique très facilement. Euh, il, faut, il faut faire un projet, mais on, on peut y arriver, quoi. Donc, d'un côté, il y, a une, il y a une connaissance technique à la base quand on construit. Et puis, vous avez raison de dire qu'il y, y, y a aussi une connaissance technique quand on intervient sur le bâtiment. Parce que nous, on intervient comme architecte. Hein. On est, on est pas, on, bien sûr, on adore l'histoire. Euh, on, on est très à l'aise avec ça. Mais il faut que l'on propose des solutions euh, qui soient des solutions euh, techniquement euh, au top, quoi, qui soient faisables, qui soient euh, économiques, euh, qui, qui, qui respectent le bâtiment. Et, et ça, c'est quelque chose qui fait partie du métier. Vous voyez on a l'impression vraiment qu'on fait notre métier quand on travaille sur des choses comme ça. Ce n'est pas une espèce de spécialisation pour... Euh, pour des gens un peu, un peu bizarres, ouais, un peu compliqués. Non, non, c'est vraiment c est, c est le métier d'architecte que de faire ça. Quoi. Et, et, et ça, c'est très plaisant. Quand on travaille, si vous voulez, sur un, un bâtiment qui est bien construit euh, avec des outils de l'architecte. Je vais aider à, à, à remettre ce que vous venez de dire en portugais ici pour les, les auditeurs qui ne comprennent pas le français. Excusez-moi, oui, oui, bien sûr. Euh, 
Então, é, resumindo um pouco, ele estava falando, estavam falando da questão da competência associada a esses projetos é, da arquitetura moderna, de construir, e ele estava lembrando o quanto o arquiteto que projetou o, esse projeto sobre o qual eles se debruçaram aqui, né, ele apresentou no início da palestra, Stirling 1, é, o quanto esse arquiteto vem de uma, né, experimentou, foram várias etapas de aperfeiçoamento desses sistemas de fachada cortina, é, e que é uma superfície muito grande para os padrões e, e proporções suíças, né, tanta é, fachada cortina assim us, utilizada, mas é, é chamando a atenção para essa competência adquirida por, por esses arquitetos ao longo de vários projetos que foram sendo realizados, e aí um cuidado que eles têm ao abordar esse tema da, da renovação né, energética e da atualização desses sistemas é, hoje, e, e esse cuidado que não é só uma questão de economia de energia, mas é também entender as competências que estão embutidas no projeto, não incluídas nele, é, e como ser atento a isso e ser cuidadoso é, na escolha da solução de atualização do sistema. Né? Então, é entender esses processos construtivos que estão muito associados a esses projetos, então faz parte do, da questão patrimonial aí por, por, por definição. E gera uma outra competência. Você super bem traduzido. É, é, isso, é isso mesmo. A questão é que é preciso uh, ter um, competências técnicas também para conseguir perceber e entender qual é que é a origem, da, as razões básicas, ao fundo iniciais das escolhas de arquitetura. Então, este é o ponto. O ponto é que é preciso conhecer o edifício, então daí a importância dos acervos, do desenho, da competência técnica e depois também descobrir que há materiais contemporâneos super sofisticados, não sei o não sei quanto, mas estes materiais não são a, digamos, a resposta em si, são a resposta dentro de um pensamento do projeto. E o que estava a dizer o professor, o que é fundamental mesmo na, na postura, digamos, do, do trabalho de equipa, é a postura que seja de projeto, mas seja um projeto que sai ou começa exatamente no respeito do que lá está. O respeito do que lá está significa conhecer o material, conhecer as razões do projeto, então daí a, a importância do desenho, do tempo para entender o lugar, qual é o lugar, qual é que são as características que levaram antigamente ao projeto e quais são as características que hoje em dia podem ser a solução, porque a maioria das vezes a solução lá está. É só abrir os olhos, mais nada. Muitas vezes. Costumamos dizer algumas vezes que o tema é fazer o mínimo possível para ganhar o máximo possível. Lá está o tema. O tema não é fazer tudo novo ou gastar o mais dinheiro possível para ficar outra coisa. O tema é preservar o máximo, fazer o mínimo para obter o máximo. Lá está o tema. O tema é como é que se vai definir esta linha. E o que o professor disse também ao longo da sua apresentação é que vai se tornar um problema de leis nacionais e regras. Agora, só não é um tema de discussão cultural. É também um tema social, político, econômico. E é por esta razão que precisamos realmente juntar as forças por ir à frente nesta direção. Outras pessoas daqui do auditório que querem falar também, perguntar. Traduzir para ele depois. Português. Não, eu queria agradecer a palestra. Acho que é, eu sou estudante de doutorado aqui do PROARC, né, e estou estudando exatamente a questão da preservação da arquitetura moderna nesse edifício da FAO, e é, com uma preocupação grande com a, com a questão dos materiais, técnicas construtivas, né, da necessidade da gente entender como que esse edifício foi construído, vocês visitaram, você visitou o NPD, né? a qualidade de detalhamentos e de desenhos de projeto que o Jorge Moreira teve na construção desse edifício, entender o que é esse edifício para poder pensar como preservá-lo. Né? Eu achei que ele trouxe experiências e detalhamentos interessantes, eu queria ter visto melhor, queria perguntar para ele se o plano de conservação que ele mencionou está publicado, se a gente tem acesso... A, as etapas do plano, né, qual foi a metodologia utilizada para montar o plano de conservação e nesses detalhamentos também de projeto que eu acho que são interessantes né, para a gente pensar no edifício Jorge Machado Moreira, a gente tem esquadrias belíssimas né, e super bem projetadas e executadas, é, a gente 
perdeu o oitavo andar né, com o um incêndio, então tem necessidade, talvez, de substituição, de restauração, de recomposição. Então, pensar esses elementos no seu detalhe para poder fazer uma proposta é, que não perca o material que lá está, né, que é um material, uma tecnologia de qualidade e talvez único para esse edifício. Né? A gente está investigando ainda essa questão dos materiais. Mas um, agradecer e perguntar para ele aonde que, que eu consigo... É preocupação de estudante de doutorado, gente. Onde eu consigo mais referência bibliográfica e mais informações ou publicação sobre o plano de conservação? Uh, could you understand? Uh, Est-ce que vous avez pu comprendre le portugais ou vous voulez uh, une traduction? Pe Peut-être une petite traduction, s'il vous plaît. Ça serait bien. <laughs> non, elle a, elle, a beaucoup, uh, elle a beaucoup apprécié votre présentation. Uh, euh, surtout euh, sur cet aspect de la connaissance euh, des bâtiments et des projets euh, euh, qui leur euh, ont, ont été à l'origine. On vous entend plus. On a un problème de son. C'est mieux Voilà. Là, ça va. Euh, oui, C'est ce qu'on a essayé de faire ici. On a perdu le son encore. documentation qui permettrait effectivement de, de travailler avec un, un, des archives assez conséquentes de détails qui existent du projet. Euh, elle, elle demande plus spécifiquement sur ce que vous, vous avez présenté aujourd'hui, euh, comment avoir accès à, à, à une bibliographie ou à des documents sur ce que vous avez montré euh, s'il y a un plan de conservation qui est accessible euh, et des spécific spécifications que vous avez euh, fait de, de matériaux et de techniques euh, employées. Oui, bien sûr. Euh, ben, en tant que laboratoire euh, de recherche appliquée, on a tenu quand même à publier euh, l'intégralité de l'étude. Hein, donc, euh, euh, déjà, il y a un livre euh, qui existe euh, qu'on pourra vous faire parvenir euh, éventuellement. Euh, il y a un certain nombre d'articles qui, euh, qui sont plus ou moins détaillés ou sur des aspects plus ou moins scientifiques euh, selon ce que vous cherchez. On peut vous transmettre euh, une petite bibliographie euh, et quelques, quelques documents. Euh, déjà, les, ces deux numéros du document Journal qu'on montrait tout à l'heure, hein, ce qui sont en open access, euh, euh, peut vous donner déjà une, une idée assez claire de, 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 des deux projets qu'on qu a menés. Et puis, on vous transmettra volontiers euh, quelques éléments supplémentaires. Vous nous entendez On ne vous entend plus. Non Vous n'entendez en, pas Maintenant, oui. Maintenant, oui. Oui Voilà. Euh... Euh, tra je, je, je traduis un peu en portugais euh, pour le public. Euh, oui. Et je pense que tout ce de travail est publié, euh, non seulement pour un, un livre qu'ils peuvent nous envier, né? a gente pode ter lá na FAO, na bibliothèque, pour consulter, euh, mais aussi des articles publiés en revistes de Open Access, euh, Acesso Aberto. Então, podem já mandar esses, esses links pour pouvoir. Euh, dar acesso à consulta. Ah, oh, perdão. Deixa eu lá. Eu, vou, eu poderia até falar francês, mas eu vou falar português para você não ter que ficar traduzindo para cá e para lá, porque sabe que né? nós somos chiques. Bom dia. É, meu nome é Cláudia Carvalho, eu sou arquiteta. Ah, não. Não. É, e eu queria dizer que estou super satisfeita, feliz mesmo de encontrar os professores Graf e Marino aqui. É, a minha pesquisa sobre preservação da arquitetura moderna já tem mais de três décadas, então esses nomes a gente acaba lendo e encontrando em seminários e para mim é uma alegria imensa vê-los aqui na minha faculdade. Né? Acho que isso é, em primeiro lugar, o que eu gostaria de falar e parabenizar né, os organizadores desse evento por esse esforço, né, que a gente está aqui numa semana de chuvas intensas e estamos tendo que, enfim, se adap adaptar a essas, a essas mudanças. Quer traduzir? 
Mais je pense que mon français, c'est pas suffi. Non, non. Moi, je pense que mon français, c'est pas suffi, mais je voudrais bien euh, demander euh, qu'est-ce que vous pensez de la différence de sensibilité pour l'héritage du euh, 20e siècle? Moi, je pense que tout ce, euh, tout ce, euh, ce euh, étude de la recherche qu'on fait, euh, moi, je ne suis pas sûre que si euh, la société, les habitants, les personnes que, euh, 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 sont, euh, peuvent, peuvent mieux euh, les valeurs euh, historiques, comme euh, mon ami a dit ici, André, euh, de l'héritage du XXe siècle. Je voudrais euh, voir euh, votre opinion sur ça. Merci. Tu vais euh, Oui, je rajouterai quelque chose. Oui. Euh, non, votre français est parfait, madame, oui. c'est formidable. <rire> euh, c'est vrai que euh, quand on a commencé, pour, pour prendre un cas concret, quand on a commencé à travailler sur le Lignon, c'était il y a 15 ans, mm -hmm. à peu près. Euh, c'est un bâtiment qui était euh, apprécié. Euh, je dirais par euh, des, des architectes, sou souvent d'ailleurs des architectes qui venaient de l'extérieur. C'est aussi quelque chose de, de, de très drôle, c'est que les, les architectes locaux, euh, ils ne connaissaient pas trop le bâtiment. Par contre, il y avait des Allemands, il y avait des Suédois qui venaient voir ce bâtiment à, à Genève, il y avait des Français, euh, Gérard Monnier, je ne sais pas si vous le, vous le connaissez, quoi. Qui, est, qui, a, qui a été de Comomo pendant très longtemps en France et qui, lui, venait régulièrement faire des visites au Lignon. Et, et petit à petit, pendant notre travail, on s'est rendu compte que les, les habitants étaient très, très contents d'habiter ce bâtiment-là. Et qu'il euh, y, y avait comme un espèce d'a priori négatif sur ce, sur ce bâtiment, mais qu'il n'était pas partagé par les habitants. Les habitants étaient, étaient fiers d'habiter euh, le Lignon. Et avec les publications, avec les colloques, euh, avec l'information, euh, avec les travaux, parce que s'occuper de bâtiments, c'est les mettre en valeur. Et quand on met en valeur les bâtiments, euh, il y a une conscience un, un peu plus générale qui se met en place, vous voyez, et, et, et le, le regard change. Et aujourd'hui, euh, on utilise des photos du bâtiment pour pouvoir euh, illustrer des événements sportifs, des événements culturels. C'est-à-dire que tout d'un coup, l'image de ce bâtiment-là, c'est une image positive. Quoi. Et ça, ça a changé en 15 ans. Et je pense que le fait d'avoir mené un travail, euh, je dirais, de, de rénovation, de restauration, assez grande, et, et de l'avoir fait connaître, ça a sûrement euh, participé, si vous voulez, à, à, ce, à, ce, à cette, euh, oui, cet, intérêt, cet intérêt, ce regard positif que, que maintenant, je pense, beaucoup de gens ont euh, à, à Genève. Je vais même vous dire une chose. Euh, depuis qu'on a travaillé sur le Lignon, quand je dis nous, il n'y a pas que nous, hein, c'est aussi les entreprises, aussi les... Les gens des services, des monuments, c'est quelque chose d'un peu collectif hein, comme, comme, euh, comme travail. Eh bien, depuis que ce travail s'est mis en place, euh, les prix de vente des appartements, ils ont augmenté. Donc, donc ça veut dire qu'il y a un réel, euh, comment dire, il euh, y a une réelle prise de conscience de, de, la, de la valeur des bâtiments. Ce sont des processus qui sont lents. On parle de 15 ans, mais c'est 15-20 ans. Euh, je pense qu'il faut, faut que ce soit fait de manière collective. Et il faut, faut prendre du temps, il faut expliquer, il faut, faut, voilà, faut, 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 faut beaucoup y travailler parce que les mentalités, elles ne vont, vont pas évoluer euh, toutes seules. Quoi. Il, faut, il faut le faire. Ça fait partie de notre métier aussi. Un architecte, c'est quelqu'un qui doit être capable euh, de montrer la valeur de choses qui ne sont pas forcément évidentes pour tout le monde. D'autant plus, euh, puisque nous venons dans un cadre, un cadre qui est un cadre académique, donc euh, quelque part la diffusion des connaissances et des résultats des connaissances pour faire avancer euh, 
cette sensibilité fait partie de nos attributions et si on s'y engage volontiers, là, on, on travaille sur un, un autre grand ensemble, Genevois, qui est un peu plus récent, du, du moment où on remet en question la notion même de, de grands ensembles, qui est détesté sauf par les habitants, qui apprécient beaucoup euh, la vie dans la cité, c'est la cité des Avanchais, mais qui est détestée par les jeunes bois qui n'ont jamais mis les pieds. Et on observe aujourd'hui, euh, dix ans plus tard, hein, exactement les mêmes mécanismes euh, qu'au Lignon, euh, on observait euh, quand on a commencé à travailler là-dessus. Donc, ça, ça nous donne bon espoir que la, la, la sensibilité et les sensibilités puissent évoluer aussi grâce euh, au fait de relever, euh, révéler certaines qualités et surtout euh, s'engager aussi dans la transmission de, de ces études. Le problème, c'est que les, les, les besoins au niveau euh, technique, surtout en Suisse, au niveau thermique, parce il y a des normes qui sont extrêmement euh, sévères. Euh, ça, ça, ça va tellement vite que notre crainte, c'est de ne pas pouvoir euh, provoquer une curiosité, une curiosité positive suffisamment vite avant que les travaux d'intervention... Mmh. Euh, de dénature des bâtiments. C'est ça, ça maintenant, c'est un peu, c'est très dangereux parce qu'il y a des, il y a des besoins impératifs euh, qu'on ne peut pas discuter. Et, et, et d'un autre côté, on n'a pas encore. Quand je dis on, c'est de manière générale, hein, c'est la société. On n'a, on n'a pas encore conscience de la valeur de certains bâtiments qui ont 40, 50 ans. Quoi. Donc là, il y a une, une c'est quelquefois des, des luttes de vitesse, quoi. É, resumindo um pouco a, a troca aqui, para quem não entende francês e para o público em português, é, a pergunta era sobre, né, resumindo também a pergunta, era sobre essa percepção né, é, que as pessoas têm em geral da arquitetura moderna, é, porque a gente sabe que a gente passou por toda uma crítica a isso, né, é, e aí é, a resposta foi essas intervenções têm ajudado a mudar o olhar sobre esses projetos sobre esses edifícios, a ponto que eh, apartamentos eh, também eh, crescem em valor, né, ganham valor, eh, e o público em geral passa a reconhecer também valores intrínsecos aos projetos, porque são intervenções que buscam justamente eh, revelar essa, essas qualidades eh, que são presentes nessa arquitetura e muitas vezes estavam ali... Eh, desvalorizadas ou, ou, ou inibidas por uma questão de precariedade e de obsolescência até é, de certas estruturas. Então, é, sim, essas intervenções cuidadosas é, ajudam a é, resgatar e a superar talvez esse, essa, né, e aí eu já estou fazendo uma interpretação da resposta, a superar essas rivalidades entre o histórico moderno, a cidade pré-moderna, pré-industrial e e tudo que se passou nessas discussões, né? É, e aí estavam lembrando aí que a gente, eles estão diante de outras, outros desafios agora. A legislação é, térmica e energética na Suíça é muito rigorosa e a preocupação deles é que isso acabe atropelando é, esse processo é, cuidadoso é, que consiste em revelar essas as qualidades dessas arquiteturas e que isso tudo seja, na realidade, perdido ou ameaçado por um processo aí, é, muito pautado por uma economia de energia, num sentido é, literal é, do termo. Sim, um, there, there is a question from, from the YouTube follower that is about the materials and it's about which was the, the how did you lead with the choice of material and with the material market in the sense how did you go to the market looking for the best practices in order to um, get new practices probably from the market for building new buildings in the market for uh, working in or refurbishing existing building Okay, thank you. Uh, it, it's a crucial uh, question, and uh, because when, when you work with some dimensions, uh, with existing details, 
you, you can just apply uh, the way you make a, a new building in Switzerland. No? Uh, as, as I was saying, uh, the, the curtain wall has six, six centimeters uh, uh, wide, and you must uh, find a solution in, in this uh, dimension. No? So uh, you are obliged to uh, um, search also with some uh, installations, very performant, uh, and, and you discover that they, they exist. They exist uh, uh, from a lot of time about, uh, uh, with, with a base of cilis, uh, and, and uh, they, they were um, in, invented or, I don't know, uh, fabricated in, in the 20s and 30s in, in the States, so um, a lot of time solution exists uh, and uh, that, that's one response. And, and the second one is uh, that in a case like this one, Le Lignon, we didn't, we didn't want to um, define uh, some materials, but just performances. Otherwise uh, you, are, you are working for a, for a uh, for uh, <clears throat> um, I don't know, uh, uh, a fabricant of, of, of materials, no. So we we keep the possibility because we 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 have not done uh, um, an architectural project. We are, we have just made a series of guidelines that you must respect uh, to have some money uh, for uh, for the the the, the subvention. Subventions for the for the for the uh, uh, for the, um, the insulations uh, uh, and and uh, um, for all the the works that, that have been done, there, there were architects, architects for the work, op operatives one, but uh, they were the, the persons who choose finally. Uh, the materials, uh, uh, the, type, the type of glass, uh, the insulation, but they were obliged to respond to some performances and some dimensions. That's clear. I don't know if I have uh, responded to your, uh, yeah, to your you answer. Mm. We, we use all, all kinds of, uh, uh, of solutions from very, uh, very high uh, technology from one materials to really very simple uh, in other in other um, in other details, you 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 don't uh, you are not obliged to use uh, the, the the same technology for all. Absolutely not. You must give a response and use use the better technology that uh, also the, the the less expensive. Eh? That, that's clear because when you are working on, on such a big building. The economy was really uh, essential, and we were working with the owners. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously, the owners don't want to spend too much. That's uh, <laughs> is is like that in Switzerland, in Brazil, and I think uh, uh, well, in, every, in every part of the of the world. Uh, so um, the the question of uh, as uh, Carlos said uh, uh, before have the maximum performance for the minimum material and the minimum cost. That was, was the idea. Traduco un istante per l'ora. So, just to uh, make a resume in, uh, in Portuguese, uh, it's like this. Um, the theme of the materials is fundamental, but what is interesting is that in questo caso non fu indicata una soluzione unica. Che se tem che essere così, vai costare un balurdo, stiamo eh, stinti. Eh, na verdade fu, vamos appuntare per una performance, nel senso, una maniera, un risultato minimo a conseguire. Ma per conseguire questi risultati, ha varie maniere per raggiungere un risultato proprio. In termini tecnici, anche. Per dire, ha vari materiali che possono risolvere questa cosa con costi diversi, con risultati diversi, ma dentro di un quadro che va a mantenere il risultato finale in termini di architettura. Perché è questo che è il punto fondamentale. Tanto tu non stai libero di scegliere os materiais. Estás livre de escolher dentro de umas soluções que foram pesquisadas e testadas 
dentro do projeto. Então, isto uh, uh, adiantou possibilidades por várias pessoas com, digamos, níveis econômicos, capacidades econômicas muito diferentes entre elas, de qualquer forma, de atingir os resultados pretendidos. Portanto, houve, uh, houve realmente a possibilidade de uh, preservar o inteiro edifício, mantivendo a diferença entre, digamos, as habitações, porque algumas pessoas tinham uma certa capacidade, outras não, ou muito simplesmente, algumas queriam fazer algumas obras e algumas menos obras, ou uma obra completa e não sei o quê. Mas o ponto fundamental era sempre, sempre, sempre foi de, uh, pelo menos, atingir aquele nível que conseguia o edifício de, de digamos, pôr, pôr no sítio os aspectos térmicos, energéticos, legais, etc., etc., etc. Grazie. A sensibilização da indústria tem a ver com o fato que a indústria tem todo o interesse em abrir este mercado. Portanto, em, em, por exemplo, na Suíça, neste momento, estão a ser desenvolvidos materiais muito fininhos. O professor, ao longo da apresentação, falou do vacuum panels. Vacuum panels são, vacuum, são panels de isolamento, feitos com eh, microcélulas fechadas. Depois eu vou poder falar disso, mas, de qualquer forma, é uma tecnologia que não é nada do outro mundo. Razoável em termos de custos e, eh, deste ponto de vista, com painéis muito fininos, atinge os resultados do ponto de vista dos suíços, porque neste caso é isolamento térmico, portanto, provavelmente aqui em Rio de Janeiro não é o primeiro ponto, de, 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 não é o, o problema maior, mas de qualquer forma, sempre há uma solução técnica ou uma inovação tecnológica que vai permitir de obter o maior resultado possível com a mínima intervenção possível, que é, que é o tema fundamental. Uh, o, o, o riassunto il fatto del, di quando ho parlato di, dei materiali nanotecnologici e il vacuum, i pannelli vacuum e quindi il tema della, della relazione tra innovazione tecnologica e applicazione al processo del minore intervento possibile. Grazie, perfetto. Molte grazie. <ride> É, bom, agora a gente queria... Vamos, vamos estar fechando aqui a sessão, uh, agradecendo muito a presença virtual uh, dos professores Franz Graf e Júlia Marino e do professor uh, Ricardo Paiva, e aqui presencialmente do professor Carlo Nodza, professor Andréia Bordi, e todos os presentes. É, esse debate todos viram que não tem fim, e que bom. E amanhã a gente vai continuar, na realidade amanhã é a abertura do, do evento, né, que era para ter sido ontem, mas vai ser amanhã presencialmente. Então convido todos que estão no YouTube. É, ah, quem quiser é, é, certificado de presença, a Dani está mostrando o QR Code para quem né, precisar do certificado, alguma coisa assim, pode pedir ali para as nossas nossa equipe, ali, agradecer a elas também, que são importantíssimas no nosso projeto, né, e enfim, e é isso, para todos amanhã, 10 horas da manhã, é, onde continuaremos a palestra do professor Carlos Noza, uh, com a abertura da palestra da professora Margarete Pereira, que está nos assistindo virtualmente, a pergunta foi dela, essa última, agradecer a ela pela pergunta, e aonde ah, será? Boa pergunta, será na FAO, o FJ, no, no Salão Nobre e Salão do Conselhos, onde estaremos, estaremos, de certa forma, inaugurando é, dentro das atividades da FAO, porque era o que era a reitoria, a sede da reitoria, que está passando a ser de uso coletivo, né, e a gente está fazendo esse evento lá. Né, então, agradeço a presença de todos e convido todos no segundo andar do mezanino, né, a partir das 10 horas da manhã. Agradeço a presença aqui e espero a presença de todos amanhã lá. Vamos contar aqui no meu